Hey everyone, it's Blue Lizard Jello, and welcome back to Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen for the PC, and we are in Bitter Black Isle. We are going to do some quick vocation and skill changes for both Silverius and myself, and today, I plan on getting rid of Rook and locating two pawns, hopefully some of yours, and then we're also going to start pushing forward to the castle where we're going to meet Mercedes, and we can actually begin the quest to bring the Hydra's Head to the Duke in Grand Soren. That will most, well no. Not even that will most likely. That will not be happening this episode because that is a long quest in and of itself. But we should be able to make it to that castle, that forward camp in this episode. But first and foremost, let's talk to Ulra. I've already taken a look to My see what skills, vocations, and augments are available. I shall, I shall so for Julie here, what we're going to do is go into skills. And because we're now ranked 3, we do have some other options, obviously skipping the sword since we're not using it. Uh, toss and trigger, really, really good. Back kick, I don't use this nearly as much. You actually do a kick, which I don't seem to be as useful. It does have a lot of stagger potential, but not uh, not too much. That uh, Or not enough, I should say, that warrants a skill slot. I am going to take toss and trigger. I think that's a pretty good quest, or pretty good skill. Not a quest at all. And then, actually, before I go into bow, I do want to jump down to core skills. And we're going to ignore these first three because those are sword and mace skills. Ungrave is, is okay, but what I really want is quick loose. So this is a skill, and it's just going to make our shooting with the bow a little bit faster. Definitely worth the 600 points. I'm going to show you the augments. I'm still not going to take any just yet. Uh, the reason being, both of these, Entrancement and Sanguinity, they are really, really good if you're going to be playing a lot at night, which I'm not going to be, mostly because I'm doing this for you guys. I'm creating content, and at night it's obviously very dark, so it's a little bit more difficult to produce quality content in my mind at nighttime. So really, really good augments. If you're willing to play at night, I'm just not willing to do that yet. But with our bow, we have a couple options here. Full bend is really, really good. A very high powered shot uh, that can actually knock enemies kind of on their took is pretty easily. Uh, again, puncture dart we talked about really good for poison arrows. I don't know that I want it just yet. Triad shot is good for hitting groups, but we already have the, the one triple shot. So that is all we're going to do for Julie. Now, with Silverius, actually, we need to change those skills. So let's go back to Julie here, and that will be Toss and Trigger. We will demonstrate that today. It's pretty cool. I think you'll enjoy it. There we go. And still no augments because I just can't be bothered to buy any. There is aught, I can do. Say. There is aught you can do. We are going to look at Silverius. So Silverius is a fighter. He is rank 4, so he does have some skills. And actually, you know what? Before... Before we do the change of vocation, I gotta remember, I do actually want to buy one of the augments for Fighter. Well, actually, probably both of these. He has a decent amount of discipline points, so we are gonna buy both Fitness, even though Fitness is decent, Vigilance is really not that great. Fitness only increases your health by, I think, 100, which really is not all that impressive, to be quite honest. And are there any skills here that I want? I don't really need controlled fall. Um, no, no, we don't, because we are actually going to be switching to the warrior class for him. I have decided I think it's going to be fun. Let's go ahead and give him a little bit more damage. So we will go ahead and switch him to warrior class. Excellent. Very, very exciting. I, I wish he looked like that now, but obviously that would be a bit overpowered. All right, so what are you wearing? You're like half mummified. Anyway, so we were doing 128 with a rank 2 sword. Now we can go up to either 291 if we want to use this absolutely massive hammer, which maybe I do. I don't know. Ooh, I don't know. Great sword or hammer? The hammer looks so cool. It is a difference of 7. It weighs a lot more, though. Let's start with the two-hander. We may equip the hammer just for fun, because doggone it, that looks great. And let's see, what do we want to wear? Obviously, keep in mind, we don't want to use the DLC. So we'll do the tunic, skull belts, wavering cloth. Was that DLC? I don't think so. Vagabond armor. Now I can't even remember. 
I think it might have been. If there nope. Is I can do, say it. Well, I didn't finish putting on his equipment, but we will switch to him and see what we can get here. So let's see. Bastion. Greatly reduces damage sustained in physical attacks. Fantastic augment. Absolutely wonderful. And we want, let's see. Extends a chain of one-handed sword across a broader range. Um, I think that's a pretty good one. That core skill, Eviscerate. And for skills, we will take both Upward Strike and Pommel Strike. There we go. It's going to ask us to change. Of course we want to change. We'll give both of these. Give them a little bit of an edge. All right, Silverius, so starting to look pretty good. All right, so we're done with the vocations. Now we do need to go back to our equipment. Oops, sorry. I'm not done. Change equipment. Okay, Julie should be good. But we need to finish putting clothes on him. Oop, not that. And we'll do... Hmm, one more physical defense for one less magical, but you do get that debilitation resistance. He looks silly, but I think we have to do it. I think we have to do it. And you should have Baleful Nails. There we go. All right, Silverius, you are kind of a force to be reckoned with now, minus the <laughs> fairy shoes and the strange leather tight type deals. Anyway, I'm going to do just some really quick inventory management, then we're going to head back to Casardus, and I'll see you there. And here we are back in Casardus. So we have done what I wanted to do as far as vocations and skill setting and all that goes. Hopefully you guys don't find that too terribly boring. I do try to understand what I'm going to do beforehand so I'm not just sitting there and, you know, umming and awing through the menus. Hopefully you guys want to see what I'm actually doing there. But before we hop down the well, we are going to go through the well so we can kill some bats and snakes and all that. We are going to get rid of Rook, which means actually... We need to take off everything we can from him. And then we're going to hire a couple pawns. And I want to show you the rift process because it can be a little bit overwhelming. But once you understand the mechanics, it's actually a really clever system. So see you in just a second here. Okay, I have now taken everything that I can from Rook. Unfortunately, the healing robes I gave him, uh, we lose those. It's a shame. I completely forgot when I gave those to him that when you try to take that off, it will go back to the pawn's creator. And I put that in quotes because Rook is just a developer pawn. So apparently the developers have lots and lots of items <laughs> sitting in their inventory. So let's go to the Ripstone. Let's head in and let's see what kind of options we have available. And we'll get two more pawns. Here we are. In the rift a pretty cool area I like that it has just this ethereal look to it and already we have Rook showing up and we're going to have some come in here most of which are going to be pawns from my friends list and we are gonna be taking a look at those but if they're too overpowered unfortunately I'm not gonna be able to take them but we might have some looks like we might actually have two that we could choose from that aren't too overpowered but first and foremost you go to a pawn and if you want them to leave well Okay, I can't send him away, but if Is I talk to him, order, we can release. Rook, honestly, I've hated you this time a lot less than normal, so thank you for that. I appreciate it. By the way, a couple people pointed out to me in the comments, uh, there was both Elfe and Aquatic Possum, the same voice actor... Of Rook, or the voice actor of Rook is the same as the voice actor of Nazim in Skyrim. So if Rook was talking and you thought, hmm, I wonder if he's ever been to the Cloud District often, that might be why. All right, Rook. May our paths cross again. Unlikely. Maybe in Skyrim. Adios, amigo. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the sorting options that you have. You are going to get, I believe by default, it is going to try to pull from your friends list. But you can see up in the top left under switch information, we can go through, and now obviously I'm using keyboard, so insert would go left, page up would go right. If I work with these, oh, that's a cool one, Starks. Ooh, I like the look of you. Anyway, you can kind of see just general information. So right now it's just general information. So you get the name, the level, and how much it would cost to actually rent them. Then you can look at vocations and gender, what their primary skills are, which, ooh, you have Ingle, which is good, but not a lot else. Uh, any secondary skills, which you have Anodyne, okay. And then their username. So this is actually going to tell you 
who the pawn belongs to. So here's my good friend Fred here, the level 30. I don't know that I'm going to be able to take that one, and that is a shame. So that is just a quick overview of how you can actually look at the pawns, but you can also go to the stone itself and you can sort. You can look at top rank, top rank this month, or you can kind of just go through your own options. So I can look at my friends list, and there we go. You can see uh, Hannah O'Fred, which is a pretty cool name, ranked 11,000, which is, uh, wow, went down. Actually, they were a lot higher yesterday when I actually looked at this. But I can also change search vocations. So I, or, um, you can also see that I can change search conditions. And there are a lot of options. If you are looking for a particular vocation, there you go, you can do that. If you're looking for a particular type of skills, you can do that. You can look at gender. It's very, very in-depth. It's rather impressive, to be quite honest. So what I think I'm going to do is first, I'm going to sort through some of these to see if any of them can join me. What I'm going to be looking for is a similar pawn to Rook, because I do want the support, I want the healing, and I also want the fire buffs, or the weapon buffs, like fire and lightning. But I'm also going to be looking for some sort of uh, other DPS. So not necessarily... A tank, although a tank might not be that bad considering we just outfitted Silvarius with a two-hander instead of a sword and shield. So let me take a look at these guys and we'll pick out two and we'll be right back. Yes, sir, reason. Well, truth be told, I don't think I'm going to currently choose any pun from my friends list. Now that is going to change. As we level up, I will be more comfortable with hiring some of these. But right now, the issue I'm running into, either they are underskilled, so they don't have the skills I'm looking for, or they are over-leveled. So, Hannah, Ofred, I would love to bring you along with me, but level 30 is just a bit much, and your skills would just annihilate things in my way. Same with a few of these others. So, we are going to actually sort, and we're going to choose some outside the friends list, which means we may end up paying some Rift Crystals, but we will see. I'll be back momentarily. Okay. So what you do is after you've put in your search conditions, then you can actually summon several of them to actually take a look at them. That way you don't actually just have to go sight unseen. Oh, I didn't I didn't summon this many though. Hmm. Let's see. They all have pretty decent Oh, you're using the monocle though. Hmm. You have some high end gear. You look a little like Bob <laughs> like Bob Ross and look at his name. Bob Ross. Oh, I like the look of Castle, though. Kind of Silverius looking, huh? Elfie? Ooh. I like Elfie. She's pretty simple. It's kind of... Kind of wearing my corset, though. What do we think? Elfie? Azuna? Smoke? Uh, you know, you're wearing some good armor, but you're only using the Pelta. Or Mira? Alright. I think... Hmm. Let's go with Azuna. Azuna, I'd like you to come with us for a while. I am honored to travel with you. All right, perfect. So now we just need a support class. Yes, Arisen. Okay, missing just a couple skills that I would like to see, but I like Darling over here. I like the name. I like the robes, and doesn't seem too overpowered. But I think we're going to yes, enter Arisen. into a contract with you, and we're going to have some I am fun. Honored to travel with you. And I with you. Perfect. So we have our team now. We have Julie, Asuna, Darling, and Silvarius. Let's go have some fun. Alright, so as I said, we're going to go through the well. I'm going to cut that out just because you guys have seen it time and time again. So please don't take offense when I cut content out. I am trying to save you guys the hassle of seeing the same thing over and over again. So, I will see you guys on the other side, and we're gonna start making our way past the encampment and up towards where Mercedes is waiting for us, but we have some adventuring to do along the way. Trust me. Oh wow, what great timing. So we're just out of the cave. By the way, you might notice I look just a little bit different because I did actually get the shed cape while I was down there because the chest had respawned, but it is now morning. So this is great. We're gonna be able to explore in the daylight, at least for the majority of it. So there are definitely some bandits, as you can see right here. Oh, I didn't buy full bend, and I meant to. Oh, jeez. Oh, I did buy full bend. What am I talking about? All right. I think we try out full bend. 
Oh, didn't work. Okay. I'll take down the most troublesome of them. There we go. Look at the damage. Or just look at the knockback. Even more so than the damage. Got him. Alright, so we clear out these bandits a little bit. Ooh, ooh. Oh, wow. Can I dodge you, please? Alright, let's do a little toss and trigger. I meant I would do the toss and trigger, not you. Alright, let's try it again. Okay, so some of the enemies are going to be too large for you to actually do the toss and trigger, but you should at least get a good stun. You got it. I'm on it. Nice fight, everyone. Oh, I like having a full team. It is very nice having a full team, finally. I didn't want to do it at the beginning just because I wanted to give you guys an opportunity, but now that people have started creating the pawns, I think we're going to have a lot of fun. Okay, so more bandits down there. That is the way to the camp. Let's go up here just for a quick minute. Got some, uh, should have some guys to kill. You gonna, okay, I wasn't sure if you were actually going to, uh, fight or not. And you are. Alright, well, that was a bad idea. Oh. See, can I toss and trigger you? There we go. Kind of hidden by the bush, but you could see what it what it did. All right, Wolf, where are you going? Oh, I do like toss and trigger. By the way, the toss and trigger, the toss obviously you know what that means, but the trigger itself, if you have any throw blasts on you or I believe any sort of flammable powder, you will actually throw it at the enemy while he's in the air, which is pretty cool. It's really fun. I typically save those for more important fights than ones that I would use in... Uh, do I want that chest? Yeah, of course I want that chest. I'm not even asking. And just a thousand gold. <laughs> Wait for an opening or create an opening. It's up to you. Thank you for the fire blaze. Appreciate it. Now we have to head back up there. Oh wow, Dragon's Dogma. I have just been having such a good time getting back into this game. And you guys have seemed to be enjoying it. I mean, the comments that I'm getting seem... Uh, a lot of you are surprised at the depth that's in this game, which is good. That's probably the biggest thing that I'm trying to convey is the amount of customization that you have in this game. It's really kind of uh, staggering, to be quite honest. More coin pouch. Really hoping for some actual treasure here, guys. I have no problem, by the way, gifting pawns items if it's going to help them help me. Let's see. Do we want to try to throw a rock? Let's try to throw a rock. Where are you going? Come on. <laughs> oh, that was beautiful, and it even killed him, too. Oh, that was fun. We have fun here. By the way, you will find some rain of pawns traveling along the road, so feel free to talk to people that are passing. A lot of them are actually going to be pawns you can hire, including this one coming up. But let's hop down here. Let's explore this little cage area. I shall restore your health. Anything here to get? No? Okay, that's all right. Let's go back down because there was that other bandit camp I wanted to take out. Probably not going to even explore everything along the way. Because there is one decent sized battle that I really want to get to. I don't really see too much for us to pick up. I mean, it's a good idea to search, but not seeing anything incredibly valuable. I do see some wolves over at that other camp. Oh, you okay? You're just going for a quick jog? No worries. We need but take this road north to find Grand Nope. I know that wolves hunt in packs, um, not only from an ecological standpoint, but also because you guys have told me quite a few times that and uh, that they're weak to fire. I'm not trying to swing blindly. Come on. Hey, would you? I'm all right. I'll be right there. I don't know what the wolves are doing. That. Nice work, Silverius. Ouch. 
I would almost feel bad for them. Almost. Everything falls quickly to flames, come on. I mean, talk about stating the obvious. I like the skull <laughs> on a little branch here. That's pretty fun. More wolves. Okay, so from here, keep following the path, and that is obviously going to lead you to your destination, which is to go and find Mercedes so you can start the Hydra Head quest, which we are not doing today, as I've already mentioned. That quest is going to be an entire episode in and of itself. It's just... Really, Wolf? It is a long quest. It takes about 25 minutes or so if you can actually go at a decent clip. Sometimes it's a lot slower because there are just certain situations that can really, really bog you down in that quest. My goodness, and the number of wolves. All right, we're making quick work of them, but it's just really, really taking a bit, a bit of time here. Okay, that's all right. Where we are headed. So that is the capital. That is Grand Soren. That is where we're going to be going with Mercedes in order to bring the Hydra head. But we're not going there yet because the camp is up there and we want to go right down here. Now, this is going to be a little bit of a fight for us because we have an enemy that we fought before, but they had considerably less health and they were unarmed before. And this time, we won't be so lucky. See if we can get Silverius to mine this real quick, since I haven't outfitted the new pawns with any pickaxes, but there you go, you can see them already. There's our next Cyclops. We're going this way because, obviously, I want to mine the ore, but Silverius needs to come up here and do it for me. We want to hunt the Cyclops because they have good upgrade materials, they're a good source of XP, and because we do have a notice board quest to kill three of them, and we've already killed one, so this will be our second of three. Alright, what do we get? Copper? Keep going. Hey. Uh, there's more there. Darling Azuna, can you can you get out of the way, please? Let him do his thing. Silverius? You know, we'll get it on the flip side. So before we actually start this fight, though, you can see that there are some harpies splashing around. So let the wolves? Where? All right, anyway, let's go ahead and see if we can take care of these harpies. Shouldn't take too long. Now you can see that symbol next to them. They do have the wet status effect, just like we would have if we went in the water. So if you have any lightning skills, this would be the time to use them, for sure. And there we go. Now, what I really want to do is see if I can get this Cyclops to turn around so I can... Come on. I need to see your face. Oh, what? No! Okay, hold on. Hold on. I want to get his tusks. That's what I'm looking for here. Alright, there's one. Remember, we talked about breaking the trunk. The tusks are a really good way to get an upgrade material. Alright. I missed. I missed. Alright, well, now, now he's going nuts. <laughs> now he's going nuts. So we might actually have to get in there and... Uh, see if we can get up here and just go right to his face we do have plenty of uh, plenty of stamina regeneration items so I'm not worried about that lots and lots of mushrooms hopefully my pawns can actually keep him distracted maybe even knock the weapon out of his hand which is completely possible all right where am I oh geez I'm on his chest come on oh don't get me don't pick no don't grab me oh he got me he got me Careful. All right. He's falling? Oh, wow. Well done. Should be a really good opportunity to get that tusk, actually. Oh, and apparently we got it already. So let's see if we can knock this weapon out of his hand. Let's focus on that. No? All right, get out of there. Time to leave. He was getting up, or at least I thought he was. All right, let's get on top of him and just go right up to his head. Nope, not not down. Climb up. He's already going down pretty quickly. 
There we go. There's some damage. There's some damage. I'm gonna use a mushroom there. Come on. He's going down, though. I would love it if his weapon was out of his hand, but... Oh, oh, oh. Not good, not good. Really not good. Guys, I need you to I need you to do something here. Yes, keep keep hitting his hand. Keep hitting his hand. Uh-oh. Not good. Not good at all. How about another uh college try and maybe maybe this time we'll play it just a little Oh look at he's playing! Oh, he's not such a bad guy. All right, he's kind of a bad guy. All right, let's get rid of these harpies again. There we go. One shot with the full bend. Excellent. There we go. Now, let's get our stamina back. And as soon as he turns around... Oh, look at that shot. That was pretty good. Now, can I actually get a tusk? Is the question. I know, that was right in your eye, and I feel a little guilty. Look at look at the pawn just sitting back and watching. It's kind of sick. I blind, blinded him for a while, huh? Alright, bud. You're okay. Why don't you look over here where the shot came from? No? Okay. I mean, you're doing a great job at... I don't know what it is you're supposed to be doing here. Come on, buddy. Let's go. I just want your tusks. All right, you know what? <laughs> it didn't really do much, but maybe we can do it now. Here he comes, guys. Watch it. Oh, I hit him, but I didn't get a tusk. Try again. Oh, hit him. Didn't get a tusk. Okay. Well, it is a it is a cyclops. We have fought them before. Oh. Well, yeah, because you just sat there and let him hit you with his giant club. Come on. Do a little bit better this time. All right, we're going to run past him and get uh, get a bit of a frontwards. Oh, is, are you just stuck? Because that's not fun if you're just going to be stuck in a tree. No, you're not. Okay. I wonder if I can use the uh, trifold arrow. Okay, got one. Good. Excellent. I'll take that very happily. Now look up, look up. Ooh, almost. Let's get some stamina back, then maybe we'll do some more threefold arrows. I shall restore your health. Yeah, well, why don't you restore Silverius' health? He kind of needs it. Mm, okay. Watch it. I'm going to try to stagger him a little bit if I can. Also, hey, darling, where's our fire? There it is. And there's the tusk. Excellent. Now, open up, open up. Uh-oh, watch it. Be careful. I would really, really love... If one of the pawns would actually be able to get his... Oh, excellent. Well done. Well done. Knock his weapon out and got him down on the ground. So, let's just uh, let's just go nuts. I'm too afraid to go up front because he can still attack. So, we'll just go up here and, and do our thing. Oh, I like what you're doing up there. Here we go. That's some good damage. And now, let's get out. Oh, no, too late, too late. That's okay. Hopefully he doesn't get his bow back, or his club back, rather. And I like what... Oh, watch it. Are you going to fall? No? Okay, come on, jump up. I know, I know his eye is vulnerable. He's a cyclops. Yeah, I will too. I will too. Let's just not let him grab us this time. Or let him grab me. Here we go. Come on. All the way up. Oh, 
All right, this time, this time it's going a lot better. But we gotta be careful. In fact, we're uh, we're gonna go ahead and get off now. And let's go for the feet. Watch it, careful. Get him staggered. Nice, very nice. With the lightning to save the day. Awesome. I like it. And now let's loot. Beef steak. Mmm. Delicious. Alright, we got the one tusk and the other one, I believe, did that break off over there? A certain death to fall from such a height. Well, don't don't fall from that height. That that'd be my recommendation. It is lined with driftwood and river worn stones. Oh, is it no? Anyway, sorry, didn't didn't mean to make fun of the pun. So we have a chest here, and we get a light cure, pretty good. But then also, if you follow this path, there isn't another chest, but there is another loot spot. It's kind of a nice little loot spot too, only because it's this beautiful view over the ocean, and you just have this solitary grave. This looks interesting. Oh, it does it? Thank you for picking up my foreign knife. Anyway, a couple of foreign knives and a flower. I gotta find that other tusk though. Hmm. I thought I broke it off somewhere around here. Well, not around here, because he was close to the water. Is it in the water? Maybe one of the ponds actually picked it up already. That's quite possible. So if you follow that canyon up, it's going to lead to an area that we're going to be going later on a quest. So I'm actually not going to go and explore that. Instead, we are already pushing a little bit longer than I wanted to with this video. So I'm going to show you one more loot area just above us. And then we're going to make our way to the camp with Mercedes. And then next episode, we will finally, we will finally go with her to Grand Soren. And a lot of things happen once you hit Grand Soren. The world really, really opens up. And there are tons and tons of quests that we need. So we're up here because... If you look down here, there is a mining spot. We'll be hitting that momentarily. But before we do that, we have some flowers and most importantly, this hidden chest. Perfect. What do we get? Ooh, dragon spit. Pretty good explosive. So we'll be traveling along that bridge with Mercedes. That's actually the camp right there. There are some goblins that way, but there's also a really, really cool dungeon cave area. That we'll be doing once we get to Grand Soren and start the Worm Hunt quest. I actually really like that area a lot, and it'll definitely prove to be a decent little challenge for us. Okay, now pawns. You all now have a pickaxe. I did equip them after I died, so let's see if we can get one of them to mine here for us, darling. There you go. Good job. Pretty stone. I'll take it. What else? A rock. Oh, Azuna, jumping in and getting a rock. All right, Silverius, you were a little bit late to the party. So let's go find Mercedes. Pretty excited. I don't really much enjoy the escort quest very much because it is long, it is tedious, but again, the game just opens up and there are so many possibilities once we finally get there. And the quest itself, it's not overly difficult, but it's not something you want to go in lightly. By the way, there are some areas to explore. The area directly behind is where you'll find the goblins, but just behind these tents, there is a chest. Don't miss this. Right here. And another foreign knife. Good. Really good for upgrading. So, you can see, here is the Hydra head. I think this is just so cool. We are literally bringing the entire head to the Duke as a gift and to show just how awesome I am as an Arisen. But... We are going to stop there, so thank you guys so much for watching. Sorry this one was a little bit long, and sorry that I died again to a Cyclops this time. It shouldn't have happened. I apologize. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next time.